you're still quite sure that you don't want me to take your hat, sir? No, no. If I take it off, I'm afraid my head will come with it. Where is the groom? Oh. Mr. Bainbridge, this is Dorothy Madison. Lovely day for your wedding. Oh, I feel awful. What'll I do? You'll find a bottle on your night table. Now you follow instructions and you'll feel much better. Thank you, darling. What are you what are you doing? What are you what are you looking for? A bottle. She said it was there. And it must be there. She said it was there. Yeah, what's this? Oh, Scoob, don't be funny. Is this, is this the bottle? Does it say from the desk of Dorothy Madison? Yeah, from the desk of Dorothy Madison, yeah. Well, who's Dorothy Madison? What is she, a chemist? She's everything. Nurse, secretary, geologist, astronomer. Hmm. Just anything you want her to be. have a loge before for every Thursday. Price is no object. This is Miss Madison, count 462. Buy a thousand American can and sell 500 U.S. steel. Thank you. This is Miss Madison. Now, Mrs. Davenport, why don't you wear that sea green gown with the topaz necklace? Madison, too. Radio for Mr. Wade. He'll be in on the gigantic. I hope it sinks, but don't tell Miss Murphy. Miss Murphy in yet? It isn't quite 9.30. Good morning, Miss Murphy. Good morning, Johnny. And we cannot recommend Weedy Beedy. Beedy Weedy. Well, whatever they are. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. To our clients until they pass the most stringent test, yours very truly. Now, let's see. American Council, Cairo, Egypt. Thank you so much for your cordial treatment of Mr. and Mrs. Pendergrass. I, um, personally appreciate your loaning them a camel. Yours very truly. Morning, Murph. Morning, Pearl. What's new? Well, Bainbridge has had his shower. Good. Check on them every half hour till the ceremony. Madison Five wants to see you. This is Miss Madison. Did you want me? Oh, yes, Miss Murphy. Mrs. Lyman called from Cherbourg. She's lost her passport. Call Washington and get me Freddie Boys at the State Department. Miss Murphy? Jimmy Phelps, Jr. has been expelled from Harvard. He's afraid to tell his father. I'll get me Jimmy Phelps, Sr. Miss Murphy? Yes? Mrs. Clermont's lost her diamond necklace again. Tell her to look in her wig. It always gets stuck there when she takes it off. <laughs> Nice quiet morning. You ain't even started yet, dearie. Mary, my black dress and the topaz bracelet. Outside of the Bainbridge wedding, John Carroll's lecture at Carnegie Hall, a musical at Mrs. Barker's, dinner for 30 at the Surrey's, and a lightweight championship fight at the Garden. You've practically got the day to yourself. You may think I'm crazy, but I love it. Now then, Mr. Bainbridge, let's look at you. Comb, please. Comb? Fresh flower. How do you feel? Sick. Oh, Madison special. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Madison, I don't, uh, I don't feel any too well either. Oh, well, then we'll make it do. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Well, uh, here you are. Uh, yes, yes, here we are. Mm, here we are. Mm. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Uh, Miss Madison, uh, do, do you think you might consider taking me as a client? Hmm? Oh, now, Scoot, this is my and wedding. I'm straight, Mr. Bainbridge. I'd be glad to, Mr. Robbins. Oh, thank you so much. You know, she might be able to do something for Audrey. Audrey? Oh, now, Miss Madison, you don't know what you might be getting into. Why? She'd wreck your whole service. Mm. Uh, she's the most feather-brained, uh, disobedient girl you ever saw. Yes? She takes after her father. Is that so? Well, if you have a daughter, I hope she'll take after you. Well, what's the matter with now, me? Then, you should gentlemen. know what's the matter with I don't you. think that should be any argument. I'm certain I can handle Audrey. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, 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 Miss Madison, I, I need a little attention myself. I, 
Do you suppose that you could get me a good cook? Oh, undoubtedly. Oh, now, Scoot, have a heart. This is my wedding. I don't mean just a good cook, Miss Madison. I mean a superb cook. Oh, Scoot. Oh, your cue, Miss Madison. Oh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, uh, chin up. Wait. Eyes forward. It'll be over in a jiffy. <laughs> Uh, what I mean is a uh, cook who can tell the difference between a hollandaise sauce and a boiled dressing, you know what I the mean? The ring. The ring, yes, yes, I have the ring. There we are, right there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> you have... Do you, Chester Bainbridge, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Lily Wilson, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Here you are, Mr. Bainbridge. Here's everything. Your passport and your tickets and you've got a cabin on a deck. And I know you're going to be happy. But what am I going to do once I get on the boat? Well, Mr. Bainbridge, from now on, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, let her go. <laughs> I assume, Mr. Robinson, that you desire to become not a cook, but a chef supreme. Absolutely, Babenko. What this world needs most is a good cookbook. And I, with your help, am going to compile one. Then pay attention. Are you ready? Yes, quite, quite. Ah, but that is the wrong answer. Why? Because no good cook is ever quite ready. There are so many little things to do. A dash of this and a sprinkle of that. Another second on the fire. But when the human animal screams for his food, we must give it to him whether we are ready or not. That. Now you are ready? Yes. No. That is uh, not quite. <laughs> Good. <laughs> then start stirring. Yes, yes, start stirring. Not quite ready. Set. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Don't you have to count two? No, the spirit Mavshavsky is counting for me. Y who? Silence! Mavshavsky is my spirit control. He's always right here with me over my shoulder. Huh? When I'm cooking. Oh, oh, where is he? <laughs> he is my master. As every epicure should know, Mavshavsky was the imperial chef to the little white father. The mad Tsar Paul I. Emperor of all the Russias. Lovshavsky killed himself in the battle of Nizhny Novgorod because the herring smelt. Oh, that's awful. Da 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 da. Теперь нужно опять начать. Понимаю, теперь опять нужно начать. Да да да. Yes, master. Proceed. Uh, uh, yes, master. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. This morning. But you're bald. If I may say so, miss, my slight baldness has never interfered with my battling. Where's my father? In the library, miss. Uh, I should say the laboratory. Uh, I mean uh, his kitchen. Uh, excuse me, miss, but I have never seen a kitchen in a library before. I feel rather confused. Well, you look confused. But finding Mr. Robinson, the famous engineer and bridge builder, indulging in cooking and the kitchen in the library... You haven't seen anything yet. No, it, it seems that I haven't. Nineteen, ninety-one, ninety-two, ninety-three, quiet, ninety-four, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven. Spirit Mushovsky tells me your sauce is gonna curdle. Oh, Daddy. Uh, Audrey, how many times have I told you not to barge in here while I'm working? Well, then you shouldn't have fired Thompson. He was so good-looking. Well, you shouldn't have asked him to marry you. Besides, I didn't fire him. Madison Service fired him. Go fight it out with him. 101, 102, 103. If you think I'm going to stand for that bunch of interfering, snoopy females firing every attractive man that ever worked in this house... Except me. If you think I'm going to have them run my life and tell me when to come in out of the rain... That's enough! Oh. No, no, 
Oh, Audrey, please, dear. But it much she tells me your sauce is going to curdle. But Audrey, Audrey, listen, dear. Now, don't be unreasonable. I have a contract with Madison Servers for life, and I'm very happy about the whole thing. They've taken you out of my hair, and they've sent me Bibenko and his spirits, and at last I can devote all of my time to my cooking. At least sometimes. I... <clears throat> now, look here. Now, you run down there and get your allowance, and in the future, tell all your troubles to Madison Service. Now, that's a good girl. Goodbye. Oh. Yeah, thank you, dear. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Phony tears, Audrey, will get you nowhere. And they simply ruin your look. Here. Take your allowance and go. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't be treated like a child without a mind of my own. Very well. I'll destroy the check. We'll skip this month. Oh, no, you don't. If this place ever burns down, you'll know who did it. It's her quiet charm that gets you. Take that, will you? If I hear another complaint, I'll scream. Oh, so you stop whistling while you work, eh? Madison 2 speaking. I want to speak to Madison 1. Madison 1? Nerd. All right, scream if you want to and lose a client. Hello? Yes, Mr. Wade. How are your naughty little ulcers this morning? Better, I hope? Your nephew? Which one? Robert Wade, known as Bob. They named him after me, hoping they'd come into my money. He's leaving on the boat from Albany tonight to descend upon me, to pester me. And I won't have it, you hear? I won't have it! Now you fly up right away and catch that boat uh, and, and push that yokel overboard if necessary. Leave my name out of it. But he's not to come into New York. Do you hear? I say, do you hear? He wants to know if I hear. Yes, Mr. Wade. I'll leave at once. Oh, no trouble at all. Thank you. I wish I'd never had a client. I wish I'd never started this service. I wish I was in a padded cell, a thousand miles from a telephone. Oh. oh, if I could only have a nervous breakdown. Well, you're doing fine. If I ever met anyone with a mind of his own, I'd faint of sheer rapture. If I ever met a man who could take care of himself, I'd die of delight. I'm so sick of running other people's lives for them that I'd welcome a caveman who'd knock me over the head and drag me over the head. Murder! Oh, if you knew how near the ragged edge I am. Save your breath, Murph. You're just tired. What you need is a day away from here. Even that trip to Albany is going to do you good. Yeah. The mere idea of it fills me with joy. Well, here I go. A man overboard. A yokel by the name of Robert Wade with hay in his hair. Madison 2 speaking. Is Bob Wade not gone yet? <laughs> He'll be out as soon as his aunts quit fussing over him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fella. He's certainly been knee-deep in women ever since he first saw daylight. Here's your lunch. Now, don't lose it. The food on those boats isn't fit to eat. No, I won't. Thanks, Aunt Libby. Bob, darling, here's $187 I saved extra for you. I'm going to pin it in the inside pocket of your coat. Well, you needn't pin it, Aunt Sarah. Oh, it's so much safer that way. Thanks, Aunt Sarah. Oh, Bob, you packed the muffler I made you. Yes, I packed the muffler. Thanks, And remember, Aunt Bob, Sarah. what I told you about the drinking water, mm. won't you? Yes, I will. Thanks, Aunt Sarah. I put a jar of my dill pickles in your suitcase. You can't get dills like mine in the city. Well, I hope it doesn't leak, Aunt Addie. Oh, no! Not the way I seal my dills. <laughs> oh, come on, Bobby. I'm here. Have a safe trip. Good morning, boys. Goodbye and good luck, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Take care of the blueprints. Oh, they're safe in this, Aunt Sarah. We're counting on you, 
Bob, and your three-way tractor. If you put it across, you'll save our lives. You mean he'll save our farms. You can count on me, boys. I'll put it over. But when you get to New York, go right to your Uncle Robert. He's expecting you. Quit gabbing, you women. Ain't much time. Well, go ahead. Who's <laughs> Uh-huh. Hungry? Mm-hmm. And here's a nice cold lunch for you. Hey, and you might as well have this, too. Gosh. Could you tell me if there's a Mr. Robert Wade on board? Well, we don't have a passenger list on these boats, miss. It's a short trip, but... Well, he's on board. Is that so? Yes. Uh, would you have him taste for me? Oh, well, we don't do that either. Oh, thanks so much. I'll find him myself. Bob? What is our next stop, please? The next stop is Hudson, miss. And how long do we stay there? Just ten minutes, miss. I see. Thank you. Bob! You're going to New York, aren't you? Uh-huh. I knew it. I've been sent to warn you. Who sent you? A friend. Uh oh now, do I look like the kind of a person you can't trust? No. But who are you? Dorothy Madison Service. Private detectives. Gosh. He must go back. He must never arrive in New York if you want to live. Me? Yes, you. You've heard about the gangsters in the big town, haven't you? Uh-huh. And how for a price they put you on the spot? Uh-huh. Well, um, Boobyface Wilson has been hired to get you. Oh. Who hired him? I don't dare mention his name for fear they'll get me, too. But if you're a smart boy, and I know you are, you'll skip off this boat at Hudson and go right back where you came from. Thanks. Shore for Hudson. all I want you to do. Is that your hat? That was my hat. You knocked it off with that thing. Oh, I'm very sorry. Oh. Well, I guess there's only one thing for me to do. Well, that's a great help. But doesn't it make us even? Even? Mine was an original Lily Lache from Paris. Well, mine was an original Nobby shop from Schenectady. Oh. Well, it... That doesn't make us even. Oh, well, don't be silly. You look much nicer without it anyway. I can't stand the hats women wear nowadays. Oh, you can't. Isn't that too bad? 
Well, I have another one in my cabin, thank goodness. No, don't put it on. I'd rather you wouldn't. You'd rather? Yes. Well, since I can't go down after my hat, what may I do, please? You can come and sit down and talk to me. Oh, just like that? Yeah, just like that. This is a good place. Oh, no, let's sit over there. It's less blowy. Well, let's sit here. I like it blowy. Come on, sit down. Yes, sir. Now, don't let me forget that. No, sir. What is it? Oh, blueprints of my tractor. Oh, I just love tractors. <laughs> You're just making conversation. Say, um, what's your name? Helen Murphy. I like Helen. Oh, that's good. Then I won't have to change it. Well, if you did, I couldn't find you when I get to New York. Address and telephone number, please. 344 East. Now, why am I doing this? East what? East 60th, Trafalgar 89723. I'll call you. We'll have dinner together. Is that a statement or a question? Say, let's have dinner now. Oh, it's too early to have dinner now. Oh, nothing wrong with having dinner early. Supposing I say no. Think carefully before you answer. The minute I stepped on this boat, I stopped being bossed by women. Come on. Yes, sir. You see, ever since I was a kid, I've been practically surrounded by women. A bunch of elderly aunts. Oh, they're nice people, all right, but... Well, they just couldn't let me alone. Giving me sort of a phobia about being bossed. That's what I liked about you right away. You struck me as being little and sort of helpless. Oh, you haven't known me very long. Oh, but I knew right away that you weren't the bossy type. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now if I thought you were. You know, I can tell just by looking at you that you're not a career girl either. Oh, you're, you're, you're cold. Let me put this around your throat. No, I'm not cold, really. Well, then why did you shiver? Thanks. You're welcome. It's late. I think maybe you better be going down to bed. Oh, but I'm not sleepy. Maybe you better go anyway. Good night, help. Oh, but I... Run along now. Passport again. Such marvelous weather. Miss Murphy, Phelps Jr. didn't graduate. What is so rare as a day in June? Isn't that right, Phil? <laughs> Something she ate, no doubt. <laughs> now, Murph, come on. Tell me, what's this all about? You know, I don't like this hat much either. Hey, wait a minute. You're slap happy, if you ask me. Slap happy. That's just the word for it. Was I slapped down? And did I love it? Listen, Murph. Before I go crazy, too, would you mind telling me what this is all about? It's about a man. Tall and handsome and, oh, Pearl! He's got a mind of his own. What do I do now? Run up a flag? Oh, no, I've already done that. A nice white one with I surrender on it and go. What is this Marvel's name? I don't know. But he'll call me. Hmm? Oh, another client for Madison Service. No, never. Over my dead body will the Madison Service ever get him in its clutches. I've given my private number, so he won't know the awful side of me. 
Pearl. He doesn't know I'm a career girl. He thinks I'm a homebody with private means. Pearl. He thinks I'm little and sort of helpless. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a case of when freak meets freak. So before I quite float out of the window, I think I'll go down by myself a hat that he likes. Your phone is ringing. Horror, is that the voice of Spring? Hark, hark, the lark at Heaven's Gate things. Hello? I won't have it, you hear? I won't have it! My, your lark has a frog in his throat. You sent him here? But that's impossible, Mr. Wade. I contacted your nephew on the boat from Albany and personally saw him get off at Hudson. Take that, will you? Who's waiting for Madison 1? Well, I assure you, Mr. Wade, I spoke to him myself. Mr. Robert Wade? He was exactly as you described him, except for the hay in his hair. The Wade's nephew's in the reception room. But he can't be. Hmm? Uh, but he can't be. All right, I'll look into it and call you back. Pearl, there's some mistake. He can't be here. But he is. Pearl, take a look in the reception room and see if I'm crazy. The Wade's nephew is a yokel with sandy hair, buck teeth, freckles, and a suit four sizes too small for him. What's the matter? Don't you trust your rose-colored glasses? Mm-hmm. There's a man. Well? He's about six feet two, kind of dark, handsome, and has a long cylinder thing under his arm. What? Take a look for yourself. Now, what's the matter? It's him. The spirit of spring? The man on the boat. My, my, what a small world. Seems to me the situation calls for action. Well, I do. Well, he's calling for Madison One, remember? Pearl. You've got to be me. Go out there and get rid of him. He mustn't come back. Tell him... Well, tell him his uncle says nothing doing. What, cold shoulder your dream man? He doesn't need anybody's help. The Madison service is not to ruin him. He'll get on. He's got what it takes. Ugh. Pearl. I wish I'd brought my bow and arrow. Good morning. I'm Miss Madison. Of course, you know what an irascible old gentleman your uncle oh. is. You mean he doesn't want to see me? Exactly. Well, it wasn't my idea to see my uncle. It wasn't my idea to come here. I'm glad he doesn't want to see me because then I don't have to see him. So it leaves me free to do exactly as I please. And I won't be needing this either. Well, isn't he colossal, stupendous, and... Okay. On a tube of Velrita shaving cream. Oh, what an awful name, Velrita. Sounds like a bad Spanish song. Velrita, Velrita, oh, how can I meet her? You know, people have been hung for less than that. She had such small feet, uh, I never could beat her. Uh, uh, uh. Be $1.39, sir. Thank you. Hold everything I've got. Thank you. What do you think you're doing? Oh, just looking for my lipstick. No, you've got enough on. All right, but don't be late. It's a swell night. I'll walk you home. Right through the park, eh? You know, Helen, I've been wondering. About what? Oh, because I've been here five weeks and haven't gotten anywhere. Helen, I know that three-way tractor of mine's good. It's new, it's revolutionary. It's cheap to manufacture, it'll sell like wildfire. I know it will. Yeah, but try and get anybody in this place to see it. Oh, someone will see it, but you worry. You're not beaten yet. I'm not so sure. Practically decided to give up and go home tomorrow. Go? Oh, Bob. Well, if it hadn't been for seeing you every night, I'd have gone a week ago. Well, I'll still see you every night. I'm afraid you get awful tired of chocolate sodas. Well, I can always switch to vanilla. <laughs> You're not the vanilla type. You're the kind of girl that was made for yachts, champagne with swizzle sticks. And I'll take you and root beer. No, seriously, Helen. 
Why should I stay in New York? The place is full of delusions and heartbreak. Heartbreak, perhaps, but miracles, too. Don't forget that. Sorry. Freda can't believe the miracle part. Come on. Yes, Mr. Dodson. That'll be attended to first thing in the morning. Oh, yes. All right. Good night. Hello, Stella. Why, Miss Murphy, what brings you here this hour of the night? Oh, I came here to think. The place where I make up so many people's minds for them ought to help me make up my own. Don't you feel well, Miss Murphy? My health's all right. It's my mind that's a little weak. Look, Stella, I want to be alone for a few minutes. You run out and buy yourself a cold drink or something. I'll take over. It's been pretty quiet. Mrs. Dodson phoned. She wants to change her opera box from Friday night to Tuesday. Stella, if there's anything in the world that leaves me cold at this minute, it's Mrs. Dodson and her blinking box. Yes, Miss Murphy. Wickersham 20270, please. Hello, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> yes, you're right. This is Miss Madison. Yes, Miss Madison. Yes, yes. If I could take two teaspoons full of baking soda, the yolk of three eggs, I should... The last time I found Audrey for you, you promised to do something for me. Remember? Well, I'm going to take you up on it right now. I want you to call a man about an invention. This minute. <laughs> if he had a cookbook, I'd be interested. Yeah. All right. All right, if you say so. Yes, I know, I know. You're always right. Mm. Yeah, what's his number? I'll call him. Wickersham, two. Yeah, I'll call him right away. And make an appointment with him for the first thing in the morning? Yeah, all right, all right. Good night, Miss Madison. Yeah, good night. Here I am in the middle of an omelet, and she worries me about a tractor. My goodness sake. We... Be sure to remember, Jason, I'm not into Mr. Edward. You can tell him I've gone to Bermuda. But if Mr. Paul calls, tell him you can reach me at Bergdorf Goodman in the custom department. You've got that? Uh, yes, miss. And if Mr. Oscar calls, tell him I'll go to dinner with him on condition we go to that little place in Brooklyn with the skeletons. And tell Father. Oh. Oh, uh, that'll be all, Jason. Yes, miss. Hello. Hello. I, I hope I didn't disturb you. No. I'm all right, thanks. Are you waiting for someone? Yes, Mr. Robinson. He lives here. Oh, yes, I know he does. I'm his daughter. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, wouldn't you like to wait upstairs in my sitting room? If you like music, I have a wonderful collection of Beethoven records. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I think I'll wait here. They told me I had just exactly 17 and a half minutes. At that rate, I figure I've got about 38 seconds to go. Oh, well, uh, that's because he's cooking. You mean he's cooking? <laughs> but I thought he was an engineer. Oh, no, well, engineering's only his hobby. He's really a cook. Yeah, but he told me he wanted to see the plans of my tractor. Jason, Jason, Audrey, I'm so glad you're here. I've done it, I've done it. It's not necessary to lose dignity. Yeah, yeah but now hurry up on in. It, it must be eaten immediately, you see? Go on, go on. And you can come in, too. That's, uh, who are you? Well, I'm... Oh, you're from the Madison Service. Yes, how do you do? How do you do? Come on in. You can have some, too. Come on in. Come on in, Jason. You stand right over there, will you please? Thank you, thank you. Uh, hurry up, Jason, hurry up. <clears throat> now, here's the idea. We have each made one of these, uh, 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 what do you call them? Вареники с мясом с грибным гарниром на Хабаровск. Yes, yes, we've each made one of those. Now, we won't tell you whose is whose, as you see, but we want you to taste and judge for yourself which is the best. <coughs> uh, now, uh, Audrey, uh, you start in, will you please? Mm, now, uh, <coughs> now taste the other. Well? Mm, that one. Ah. 
Mm. Um, um, uh, you taste, uh, will you please, Jason? <clears throat> oh, it smells good. And um, the other? Well? That one. Aha! <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Uh, you have a try at it, will you, uh, young man? <clears throat> Well? This one's fine. That one tastes like glue. Ah, ha, ha! <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend. That's very kind of you. Now, Mr. Indeed. Robinson, I have here... You a... have a pagan tongue, an uncivilized palate, an amateur digestive tract. I don't even have to ask Mavshovsky, forgive me, old friend, to tell me that you are not an epicure. And for this I work. For this I call upon the shades of great artists like Lacullus and Briar Savarin. Ah, if this occasion is too much, I'm going back. Back, back to you here, to your Ethel Goody Waffle Shopping. Oh, Bibenko, Bibenko, oh, please, don't upset yourself like that, old man. You're, you're the master, I'm only the pupil. Oh, think, man, think. Think of your eggs, Pilaf. Think of your cashier, Kruf, Snayeska, with truffles. You, oh, don't go back to ye Ethel Goody Waffle Shopping. Silence. Advise me, Wachowski. Сашенька, скажи мне, что мне сделать? Я не знаю, обижает меня, я хочу уйти. Да, хочу уйти, но обижает меня. Окей, окей. I've been ordered to stay. Ah, good. That's my friend. I knew you would. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, now, young man, you want to see me? Yes, yeah. he does, Daddy. He has plans for a tractor and a perfectly beautiful one, too. How do you know, Miss Robinson? You haven't seen them. Well, if you made them, they must be beautiful. Mm, all right, Audrey. Now, don't start working. <laughs> Just uh, leave us alone, will you? That's a good girl. Run along now. <clears throat> Mr. Robinson, I... Well, I, I hope I'll see you again, Mr. Uh... Wade. Wade. Yes. Uh, Jason, if Mr. Leonard calls, tell him you don't know when to expect me in. Yes, ma'am. Well, now, Mr. Robinson, I... I, uh, oh. I hear you have plans for a new type machine, is that right? Yes, sir, I have. Well, let's see them, will you? Well, this hardly seems the place to show them to the best advantage. Well, I've got to stay here. I have a pie in the oven. <clears throat> Well, I uh, could come back tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Wade. Uh, Mr. Wade, uh, this probably seems a little odd to you, no doubt it is, but see, this is my way of relaxing. When I stand over a hot stove, I can forget all my other problems, you understand? <laughs> so now if you realize the situation, why, we'll look over your plan, shall we? Just uh, lay them out there on the floor, huh? <clears throat> it's a cinder, Mr. Robinson. Uh, 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 what, what? Your pie, Mr. Robinson, belongs to the ages. Go oh, to the devil with the pie, Mr. Wade. I think you might be a genius. <laughs> what do you say you and I get out of the kitchen and get into what's left of the library? We have a lot to discuss, Mr. Wade. <laughs> <laughs> Mashovsky, what do they mean by the limit of n terms increases in zero? What do you mean, you don't know? Well, ask Sir Isaac Newton, Socrates, Aristotle, but find out, I must know. Uh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Now then. Uh, how much, uh, how much advance royalties would you want, if it isn't uh, too much? Well, Mr. Robinson, I don't know. I, I haven't thought... Well, figure it out, my boy, figure it out. I'll have to have a working model first, you know. A working model? Well, gosh, that'll take me a couple of months and it'll cost a lot of money. Yes, but I'll have to have something to show to my board. Your idea is so revolutionary, I'll, uh, I'll have to be convinced that it'll work. Well, Mr. Robinson, I haven't got any place to work here in New York. Oh, is that so? Is that so? Well, let's see. Well, why not here in this house, where nobody will see what you're doing until after we get a patent on this thing, huh? I have a machine shop in the cellar, beautifully fitted out, too. I made all the gadgets for my kitchen there. Gee, that's great. Well, I'll make a note of that. Oh! Oh, I, I didn't dream you were still here. Yeah, run along, Audrey. You knew he was here all the time. <clears throat> now then, now we'll, um, we'll have to find a place for you to live near here, see? Now, how should we go about that? Let me see. By George, I have it. Madison Service. Madison Service? Well, yes, aren't you a client? Uh, Miss Madison personally recommended you to me. Well, I dropped in there one day for a moment, but I didn't have any idea that they knew anything about me. Oh, <laughs> they know everything about everybody, the snoopers. Now, Audrey, please don't be ridiculous. They're marvelous. And get out of my hair, will you? I've asked you that many times. Mm. 
Your troubles are over once Madison service starts on you. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Robinson, I hope he likes the tractor. Hello? Yes, Mr. Robinson. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. An apartment. You want us to get Mr. Wade an apartment? I could have predicted that. And what's more, I'm going to get him to sign up with you as a client. Yeah, you deserve the commission. Now about the apartment. <clears throat> uh, I'll, uh, I'll want to see the boy often. Uh, yeah, but not too often. So, uh, it must be something near. Yeah, but uh, not too near. <clears throat> and it must be something nice. Yeah, but uh, not too nice. <clears throat> that is uh, expensive, I mean. Well, it must be cheap. Well, they'll know exactly what to do and we'll arrange the financial details later. Right. Yes, that's right. We'll be very glad to give Mr. Wade our service to Lux. Yes. Goodbye. Well, he's a client. Put the girls on it. Dorothy Madison. What do you want? Dorothy Madison service, sir. Here's your laundry, sir, and a few incidentals that we forgot. Oh, so that's where my socks and underwear went, eh? Dorothy Madison service, sir. Anything else, sir? Oh, go away. Can't you even leave my socks alone, Miss Madison? I like them with holes in the toes. There's going to be another undeclared war. Well, oh, hello, I'm sorry. Come on in. Is it safe? Sure. So you found it, eh? Yes, I got lost a couple of times. Now just wait till you see the joint. Oh, I think it's swell. Do you like it? Sure. It's got a north light. It's in fairly good taste. In a convenient neighborhood. And uh, the rent's cheap enough. How did you know? Well, I didn't. I just didn't think you'd take it unless it were. Oh, I didn't take it. Something called the Dorothy Madison Service took it for me. Did you ever hear of it? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be quite good. Does everything for people, doesn't it? Yes, I'll say they do. I'm just waiting for them to tuck me in bed and say my prayers for me. Oh, it can't be as bad as all that. Oh, no, it's worse. You know, they even found out what kind of toothpaste I used. Now, how do you suppose they knew that? I can't imagine. And they darned my socks. I swore I'd never wear a pair of darn socks again. The holes were my uh, badge of independence. You won't, will you? I won't what? Darn a guy's socks on. Never. Swear it. Swear it. <laughs> Last night you were pretty depressed. How does it feel to be happy? I knew those blueprints were good. So did I. You know how you know things sometimes without any rhyme or reason. You just know them. That's the way I felt about you the minute I saw you. Mm, I'm glad. Because uh, it took me all of two hours. Toughest two hours I ever spent. <laughs> You just sit there, will you, and make believe that you really belong here? All right. I'll be back in a minute. Here's something for you. Oh, Bob, they're lovely. They're the only thing in the room the Madison service didn't think of. We can't 
that amount's only $387 advance on that tractor. He's likely to ruin the whole deal. He may have a very good reason. I'm going to find out. I'll call him. As Helen Murphy? Helen Murphy's not supposed to know anything but Moon, Spoon, and June. Mm -hmm. Do I detect a note of irony? Miss Madison will call. Get Mr. Wade for Madison 1. Well, you didn't have to do it this minute. Your Aunt Pearl says there's no time like the present to coin a phrase. Oh, he might recognize my voice. You know, I thought of that a few minutes ago. I'll change it. Tenor or bass? Oh. Mr. Wade on five. Good morning, Mr. Wade. This is Miss Madison speaking. Good. We understand from Mr. Robinson that you're about to make a deal with him. We're very interested in your decision. Well, we don't think the $387 is enough to ask. You don't think it's enough. Well, that's exactly what that tractor cost. And you listen to this. I don't want to make an exorbitant profit out of that tractor. It's got to be sold cheap if it's going to do any good. And neither you nor anybody else is going to stop it. He's got a swell reason. A swell reason. Well, of course, Mr. Wade, we sympathize with your feelings. But Mr. Robinson won't think much of anything that the inventor doesn't ask a decent price for. Well, as, as a matter of fact, that seems to make sense. What do you think I ought to ask? Ask for 15000 Hello? Ha Hello? Hello? What's the matter? Maybe he dropped dead. I'm afraid this connection isn't very good. It sounded exactly as if you said $15,000. That's just what I did say, Mr. Wade. Ask $15,000. He'll offer five and you settle for ten. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we put that over. I don't know whether I... I don't know whether I'm glad or sorry. So I said to him, Robinson, look here. It's going to be $10,000 for no deal. Did you really, Bob? Yep, and he backed right down. Oh, you're wonderful. Well, well, why am I boring you with all this business talk? Oh, but I'm interested. Even though I don't quite grasp it. Now look at your face. All puckered up. That's what business does to a woman. Makes her look like a, like an accordion. Audrey, please go away. Oh, I, I won't disturb you. I just thought maybe I could help. How many times have I told you, Audrey, that the only way you can help is not to come down here? I'll just sit right here. Now, you'll see. I'll be as quiet as a mouse. Can you get down? Not unless you help me. Good. <gasps> Here, file your nails. Oh, Bob. Wouldn't it be wonderful if he'd ask me to marry him? If my allowance check isn't ready, Miss Madison, it's all right. I can come back for it later. I can come any time. Oh. She must be sickening for something. Audrey. <laughs> now come out of it slowly. 
You feel all right, Audrey? Oh, yes, Miss Madison. Oh, I feel wonderful. Have you ever been in love? <laughs> After another. Can't be that Walt had a chauffeur. What? Oh, well, goodbye, Miss Madison. Thanks for everything. Oh, Audrey, you forgot this. Oh, so I did. And there's the door. Oh, yes. Well, thanks so much, Miss Madison. You've been awfully good to me. Oh, I shall never forget that it was you who sent him to our house. That beautiful young man with the blueprint. Blueprints. What are we going to do? This thing has got to be nipped in the bud. Pearl, you've got to help me. Not only for his sake, but mine. Well, I'd, I'd even try to save my worst enemy from little Audrey. Get me Mr. Wade on the phone. Don't forget the Madison voice. I won't forget anything. Hello? Call from me? Oh, thank you, Jason. Hello. Oh, what is it now, Miss Madison? Audrey Robinson? Of course I know her. What about it? Warn me against her? Now, look here, Miss Madison. It's high time you learn to mind your own business. I don't want you or your service poking your nose into my private life. I'll see any girl I want. And for your private information, tonight I've got a date with a girl named Helen Murphy. Well, this is a fine time to be coming home, I must say. Why, anything the matter? Well, little Scooty Robinson's having fits. Audrey's missing again. Oh. Uh, well, do we start the wheels rolling to find her or not? Find her? Certainly, why not? Oh, I gather she's no longer a menace to love's young dream. Oh, Pearl. Nothing's any longer a menace. I know he's going to ask me to marry him the minute he finishes that model. Well, boys and girls of Radio Land, what do you think our little lady's going to say to that? Ask your neighborhood grocer tomorrow. Get the brinket in service, will you? There's a pal. Okay. My home, let me call you. Do 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 Hey, Audrey, who shelved you? Oh, Bob, I've been waiting for you hours and hours. It's awfully late. It isn't late, it's early. And I'm inspired to work. Then you don't mind if I sit here and watch? Not a bit. On second thought, it's late and you better go to bed. Why? But she will be found, won't she be, Benko? But Madison's service has always brought her back, alive. I will ask the spirit Mavshovsky. Yes, yes, ask him. Where is she, Mavshovsky? Where is she, Mavshovsky? Там где холодно и темно, и внизу. Ага. Well, she's down below where it's cold and dark. You'll never see her again. Oh, Benko, don't say that. Come on, get down, Audrey. How can I? Audrey, you know you're really a very cute kid. Oh, Bob. Now, run along now. My own, let me call you my own. 
Bob, are you singing to me? Well, sure, if you want to. In my heart. Bob. Alone. Bob, do you like brunettes better than blondes? Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. Ignition. Bob. Do, 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 do you like me? Of course. Point you. Do, 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 do. You know what, Bob? Daddy would be awfully happy if, if I were to get married. Sure, sure. And, and he'd simply swoon if I were to marry you. Why not? Darling! Hey, what's this? Oh, of course I will, of course I will. Of course you will what? Well, you just asked me to marry you. Oh, you angel. Hey, Audrey, Audrey. Mm. I what? Oh, you darling. Come on, let's tell Daddy. Come on, he'll be so happy. Hey, Audrey, Audrey, wait a minute. You can't do this. You're slipping, my friend. Save pirate and toothpaste. Audrey, my oh. little wanderer. May I go to bed, sir? Yes, I go any place you like. Oh, Audrey, Audrey, where have you been? Down in the cellar. Certainly, we're at school and dark. Well, what were you doing in the cellar? Getting engaged. No, 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 no. Who to this time? To him, Daddy. To Bob. To Bob Wayne. Oh, my dear child, what a relief. <laughs> at last you've done something really worthwhile, haven't you, huh? Oh, Bibenko, he's a splendid fellow. Brains, brawn, sense, everything. Uh, kiss your father again. Oh, you? darling. Mr. Robinson. Oh, my Mr. Dear, Robinson, dear I, fellow, I think I really want to explain. Just say no more about it. It meets with my enthusiastic approval. But, Mr. Robinson, you don't understand. Skip it, my I'm boy. Right. Skip it. Well, your invention will be a success. You'll be rich, even without Audrey's fortune. But, Mr. Robinson, that is what I want. Your sense of unworthiness does you credit, but don't mention it again. You're exactly the sort of a son-in-law I've always hoped for. Oh, Babenko. Isn't he sweet, Babenko? He still is a barbarian without a palate. Why, he has so, too. Why, you have so, too, a palate, haven't you, darling? I think I'll go home. Oh, Bob! <laughs> Let him go, Audrey. Happiness has dazed him. Oh, Daddy, I'm so happy! The spirit Mashovsky tells you me. You tell Mashovsky to keep his nose out of this. Audrey, now please, now you go on to bed, will you? You've made yourself dizzy. Go on, now run along. I'm a little dizzy myself. I'm going to call up Miss Madison and tell her to call off her bloodhound. Now who could that be? Shall I find out? If you're curious. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Robinson. Oh, goody, goody. I'm so glad she's safe and sound. And what? She what? Just a minute. What's the matter? Hello? I'm afraid I don't hear you, Mr. Robinson. Engaged? You mean to Mr. Wade? Oh. Uh, bye. He's going to marry Audrey. Oh, I don't believe it. No, you don't, do you, Pearl? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It just couldn't happen. It's, a, it's another one of Audrey's brainstorms, isn't it? Of course it is. It's uh, foolish to worry about it. It's insane to give it another moment's thought. It's, it's something to laugh about, isn't it? You're absolutely right. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? To make sure. Bob. Helen. Oh, Bob. What? What's the matter? Why, well, you're like a scared chipmunk. I was scared. But I'm not anymore. If I'd had any sense, I wouldn't have been in the first place. There'll never be anything to be scared of in here. <laughs> Darling. Now, come on. Tell me all about it. Well, Mr. Robinson called and... Robinson? Yes, Robinson. You mean Mr. Scoot Robinson? Huh? Mr. Scoot Robinson. But I didn't know you knew him. Well, I do in a way. Well, why did he call you? Well, he's... Well, uh, 
He wasn't important only that... Well, it must have been pretty important if it sent you running here at two in the morning. Oh, Bob. He said you were going to marry Audrey. I had to make sure it wasn't true. It isn't, but why did he call you? Well, he... I... Oh, Bob, I'm going to tell you. I should have a long time ago. It'll be a relief to tell you. Go on, tell me. Well, don't get mad or anything, but I... Bob, do you remember the pirate and toothpaste? Yes. And the Velveeta shaving cream? Yeah. And you asked me how they knew? They? Yes, the Madison service. Well, how did they know? <laughs> I told them. Well, why should you tell them? Well, I... Because... Well, you see, I'm the owner of Dorothy Madison. That is... I am Dorothy Madison. I forgot to send you your check this week. Oh, Bob. You have a right to be angry. You can say or do anything you please. I, I deserve it. But please, try and remember, I didn't deliberately start out to lie to you. It, it just happened that way. And then I got in so deep, I, I couldn't get out. You're out now. Bob, I couldn't tell you about me after what you said about bossy women. Why, I was the bossiest woman in the world. I, I ran people's lives for them. I, I made up their minds. I... I told them when they could eat and sleep and drink. Yes, now I remember. Suddenly, Mr. Robinson called, just like that, a boat from the blue. Then I had to have my deal arranged for me, because I was too stupid to do it for myself. That was you, wasn't it, with that phony, high-pitched voice? Yes. And then you got this apartment for me and picked out the towels and the soap, decided how much the rent would be. Tip the elevator boys in advance. Oh, I didn't. I didn't tip the elevator boys in advance. How could that have slipped you, Miss Madison? An important thing like that. Why, I might have made a mistake and tipped them too much or too little. Ruined your professional reputation. But you didn't forget Audrey, did you? That wasn't the way you planned it. So you got on that trick voice of yours again and called me up and warned me against her. That was very sweet of oh, you. Oh, Bob, please let me... You must have had a great time running my life. It must have been great fun making all the decisions for me. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Madison, but I don't need your service any longer. From now on, I'm going to make all the decisions for myself. And the first one is that I'm going to take Audrey up on her proposal. Oh, but Bob, you can't do that. Well, little Miss Fixit, I'd marry Audrey now if she had two heads. Listen, you sad. I think we ought to be a little more quiet. Maybe you ought to go before the neighbors start calling the Madison service. Mr. Robinson. A party? What sort of a party? Well, a party at which I want to show Mr. Wade's finished tractor to the board. And I want you to attend to everything. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. You'll be surprised when you hear this. <laughs> I'm going to announce Audrey's engagement to Mr. Wade at the same time. <laughs> I particularly want you to come, Miss Madison. Because after all, I have you to thank for everything. Not only did you send me the design for a perfect tractor, but the right sort of a son-in-law. And I'll never forget you for that. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Love 
Father Madison. Murph, will you please stop us? Do you know what they're doing to me? They not only want me to arrange their engagement party, but they expect me to go to it too. And I won't. I won't do it. I'll close up the Madison service first. I'll arrange their party for them. Ah, oh, come on, Murph. Keep your chin up where it's always been. Don't let a mere six feet of blueprints get you down. Ah, oh, Murph, have a heart. You'll have me doing this too. Finished yet, my dear boy? Well, you're going to be late for the party. My goodness, the whole board is coming to inspect this packer tonight. What's taking you so long? All those revolving pins again, huh? Let me see. Well, now, Robert, you ought to be able to fix these all right. If I had just one uninterrupted hour alone, I think I could fix the turn. Oh, yes, of course. I understand what you mean. Yes, alone. <laughs> yes, you mean alone. You heard what he said, Audrey. So the sooner you leave him, the sooner he'll be alone. <laughs> yeah, well, while you're tinkering with that last uh, nut, I'll arrange for a sauce for the sturgeon. Oh, Bobby, darling, you won't be long, will you? You have to dress in everything, you know. Oh, Bobby, when we're married, where shall we go on a honeymoon? Oh, Paris is so usual. How about Havana? We'll leave all those decisions to the Madison service. Oh, I should say not. The minute we're married, I'll be out of their clutches. You just wait and see. Audrey! Have a... Yes, darling? I think there's something you ought to know about me. When people interrupt me while I'm working, a strange thing happens to me. First I see spots before my eyes, then I hear a rushing in my ears, then a roaring, then I brain the nearest person with this! Oh! Oh, Bob! Bob, what's the matter with you? Well, how did you ever get like this? It's inherited. There's always been insanity in my family. Sometimes my spells last only a minute. Sometimes they last a day. Sometimes I'm afraid they're going to go on forever! finished. You know, I always thought this would be the greatest moment of my life, and I feel as flat as old beer. Tonight, I feel as sad as sour vodka. I feel lonesome. Lonesome for the steps, the big, beautiful, rolling steps of old Russia. There I was appreciated. There I was somebody. A super chef, eh? <laughs> A chef. I was Prince Sergei Vasilievich Bibenko, Colonel of the Black Eagle Imperial Guard. A prince, eh? Yes. Say, do the Robin... Does Audrey know anything about this? No, no. Little do the Robinsons know that the old blood of the boyars boils in my veins. That I was an intimate and familiar to all the royal blood in Russia. Or they would have invited me to that party. I'll say they would. Especially Audrey. Audrichka, my little Audrey. Bibenko, I invite you to this party. Say, I know you're a prince, but... Well, have you got anything to uh, make you look like one? You know, I mean, medals or decorations or anything like that? Medals or decorations? Yes. I had a double-headed eagle of Moscow. The Preobrazhensky Cross, the Insk, Minsk, Ansk, and Tamsk medallions, the Iron Virgin Moldava, the Baltavsky Star with palms, the Nizhny Novgorod Rosette with vultures. And the monocle. Well, put them all on. You're going to this party, baby. We haven't got much time. Uh, please. Your Highness. Monsieur. Mr. and Mrs. Burton Devereux. Well, well, how do you do, Mrs. Devereux? How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Devereux? Hello, Devereux. Good. How are you? May I present my fiancé, Mr. Wade. Oh, 
How do you And is this the young man I've heard so much about? Uh, Mr. Devereaux was a member of our board, Robert. Good evening, Mr. Wade. Oh, how do you do? Mr. Nikolai Vorachinsky. Well, good evening, Mr. Vorachinsky. I'm so glad you could come. You, you know my daughter? <laughs> yes, do. yes, everybody does. And this is Mr. Wade, of whom you'll hear more later. Of whom I have already heard. Uh, Mr. Borachinsky is an honorary member of our board and uh, commissar of the Moscow Harvester Company. Miss Dorothy Madison. How do you do, Mr. Uh, Borachinsky? Good evening, good evening. How do you Mr. do, Mr. Madison? And of course, Mr. Wade. I'm so glad you could come, Miss Madison. What a pity uh, Miss Madison couldn't come. Yes, yeah, she wanted to so badly, but she has such a dreadful headache, migraine, you know. Uh, Mr. Wade, have you ever had migraine? No, but I got hit on the head with a baseball bat once. Oh, did you really? So did I. Oh, what a pity you both recovered. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Announce me, please. His Highness the Prince Sergei of Russia. Uh, but who? Bibenko. I found out who he really was and took the liberty of inviting him here. You... <laughs> Master of the Royal Bedchamber, Knight of the Volga, Cupbearer to His Most Imperial Majesty, Baron Bibenko of Kakko, and Colonel of the Black Eagle Imperial Guards. Is she really all those things? All of them. Uh, well, good evening, Your Majesty. Uh, good evening. Why didn't you tell me that you were an Imperial uh, Blackguard, uh, uh, Your Highness? We we'll give you our permission to call us Bibenko. Uh, well, that's very kind of you, uh, Bibenko. <laughs> uh, does the spirit Mashovsky know who you are? We have no secrets from him. Ah, ah, Brashinsky, glad to see you. Сколько лет, сколько зим мы не видали. Do you know the prince, the baron, do you? But certainly. My father was overseer on the estates of his family. My, my, my. And to think he was overseer on the stakes of my family. Hmm, hmm. Uh, I have your permission to go, have I? You have our permission to withdraw. Yes, thank you, Your Majesty. Thank you. I... Hmm. Uh, uh, Robinson, uh, may I have a word with you? Uh, mademoiselle. And my honored friend. <laughs> the nostalgia of Strauss. Always at the feast of St. Boris, we used to dance to Strauss in the Winter Palace. Mademoiselle, may I have the excruciating pleasure? Well, yes, of course. Uh, that is, uh, if you don't mind, Bob. Oh, no, I gladly give the first dance of the evening to his highness. <laughs> I want to compliment you on the arrangements for tonight. I've never seen the Madison service so efficient. Oh, we've done better jobs than this. Look at the job we did on you. Hmm. Miss Madison number two, you're just like your boss, aren't you? Not quite, Mr. Wade number two. I wish I were. I wish I had her looks, her brains, her courage. Not quite enough courage to come here tonight and arrange things herself. She has too much sense to see you making a mess of everything she did for you. Miss Dorothy Madison. Well, well, hello, Miss Madison. My, 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 I thought you had migraine or a headache or something. Oh, even a headache couldn't keep me away from this happy occasion, Mr. Robinson. Well, that's very nice of you to say that. Now that you're here, I feel much safer about making my announcement. I, I'm not very good at that sort of thing, you know. I... Oh, never mind. I'll be right behind you. <laughs> well, then, shall we uh, get on with the ordeal and sort of get it over with? <laughs> Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, just a little attention, please. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Will someone stop that music, please? <laughs> I say me... I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, lady! Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I have invited you here this evening uh, to uh, kill you all with one stone. <laughs> uh, 
Chairman. Not only do I want to announce the embarrassment, uh, the engagement uh, of my daughter Audrey to uh, a new tractor, uh, but I want you to meet my new three-way son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my daughter Audrey has worked on revolutionary principles and I am proud to say that I have never seen a more perfect machine than he is. <laughs> so, without uh, further to do or to do, I will ask Miss Madison, uh, to whom I owe everything, uh, to uh, unveil uh, Mr. Wade. <laughs> Please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to add a few words to Mr. Robinson's eloquence. A little something about the young inventor himself. Oh, no you don't. This is what you asked for. Mr. Wade is a, a lone wolf who conceived, executed, and carried out this remarkable new tractor entirely on his own. In short, Mr. Wade's a genius. But I should like you all to share my happiness in the knowledge that the lone wolf has found a mate. A girl who, with her strength of mind and sterling character, will be forever at his side. A fitting helpmate and counselor in all the years to come. Right there, will you? This one? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Way. Here we go. It's a success. A success. It's worth a million dollars. Lindy. Well, Mr. Wade, let's take a look at you. Comb, please. New flower. How do you feel? Oh, how am I expected to feel? Oh, at this point, they usually say sick, but of course, you're different. Oh, not in the least. I wouldn't think of upsetting your usual routine. Ask me again. How do you feel? Sick. A Madison special, please. Uh, you better make it, too. Miss Madison looks a little sick herself. Why, I never felt better in all my life. Oh, Miss Madison, you're slipping that filthy stuff. Oh, I forgot, Mr. Wade. I should have brought you a glass of milk. You shouldn't forget anything at your prices. Yes, but just think of the quality of our service. To say nothing of the personal satisfaction you get out of your work. Say nothing of the peculiar things that our clients sometimes ask us to do. For instance, we once placed a tractor. Oh, did you? Yes. The inventor was a pig-headed sap, but we didn't mind. We went right ahead. No, you never do mind, do you? You go right ahead like an army tank pushing everything out of your way to make way so that our clients can take all the bows while we do all the work. That's because you put your work before everything else in your life. Oh, Bob. Yes, Miss Madison? Well, it's nearly time for the ceremony. I suppose you look presentable enough. You may go. Well, I may look that way, but I'm very uncomfortable in this stuffed shirt outfit. And these shoes you bought for me hurt, and I want a piece of chewing gum. But you can't chew gum while you're getting married. Well, what can I chew while I'm getting married? Your cud. Oh, 
there you are. Your bride may be swooning with joy somewhere, but she hasn't gotten here yet. Well, didn't you send the car for her? The car's gone, too. Yeah, what, what shall we do, Miss Madison? Audrey isn't at home. She isn't any place. Have you looked in the broom closet? Yes, I did. I, no, I... What would she be doing in a broom closet? Why not? Say, this isn't anything to joke about. When did you see her last, Mr. Robinson? I didn't see her. That is not today. I don't think I did. I... I... I um, did I, Miss Madison? Daddy, I'm a princess. Audrey. I'm a princess. Audrey. Oh, Daddy, I couldn't help it. He simply swept me off my feet. Everything became a blank, and before I knew it, I was standing before the city clerk saying, I do. Well, well this is most peculiar. It, it, it's even irregular. In fact, it's astonishing. I, yeah, my little one, a princess. My, my, my. Is, well, that means she's married to you. Mm -hmm. Oh. I hope this doesn't mean that you're going to give up your cooking. Oh, never. My love for my little Odrichka will carry me on to new depths. Oh. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Do you mean to tell me you're actually married? Oh, yes, Miss Madison. It's legal and everything. Oh, Bob. Can you ever forgive me? Never. But, Mr. Wade, only this morning you made it quite quiet. quiet. She didn't, but, but I mean when I talked it over with you. Quiet! But, but why are you so surprised? Do you dare to stand there and insinuate that you warned me? Have I a spirit, Mashovsky, to tell me what's going to happen? One of us is crazy. Yeah, well, which one? Well, he is, Daddy. He told me himself there's insanity in his family. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't be expected to marry anyone that's crazy, now could I? Well, Audrey. Give us one good reason. Mr. Robinson, I'll give him my word of honor that the Bebenkos were saying way back to Peter the Great. Well, uh, except my, my cousin Alexander Alexandrovich and uh, uh, my uncle, uh, Yuka Bebenko, and my aunt, Van Dantonovna. You know, I was always suspicious of your father. My father was crazy, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. Shut up! Now, Mr. Robinson, I'm afraid you'll have to go out in the chapel and tell your guests there'll be no wedding. Now, wait a minute. So I'm the goat around here, am I? Well, not on your life. I've tried on this monkey suit 11 times and I'm going to use it. See, I'm going to get married. It's up to you. Get me a bride. Here's your chance to prove how great your medicine service is. Hang the medicine service! Say that again and smile. Hang the medicine service. Wade service from now on? Yes, boss. If, if my son is a prince, what does that make me, a king? Uh, yes, come on in before they crown you. <laughs> my spirit, Mafshovsky, tells me this is the end.